Welcome back. We're glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. It's the Kickstarter and we shall be talking taxation landscape in the real estate industry, understanding what is happening and what ought to be done. I have a very interesting guest who will be speaking to us. She comes from the Global Institute of Property Studies. She's also a lecturer at Macquarie University Business School teaching real estate and she is a consultant. So no doubt you, wanna, you don't want to miss that. But before you know her, let me just give you a preamble or for our discussion this morning. The real estate industry has been growing steadily in recent years due to the increasing demand for housing as well as commercial properties. However, one of the biggest challenges the industry faces today is taxation. The government in its dire need, according to reporters, of an addition of 5.64 trillion Uganda shillings to fund the 58.3 trillion budget for the next fiscal year. Solutions to bridge this financial gap is causing consternation as it comes for money in terms of taxes and the real estate industry is not being spared. Dr. Rachel Mirebe is here to help us understand the dynamics at play and whether the industry is up for the game when it comes to regulation and taxation. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank How you, you very much. Great. The preamble alone is something of deep reflection, especially for those that are in the industry. But let's begin with the people who are not in the industry for us to understand what the dynamics are. When the average Ugandan hears real estate, many times it's about money and mm. the ability to, you know, go about uh, procuring and uh, shuffling people into nice houses and stuff like that. What is the overview of the real estate industry in Uganda today? Wow, thank you very much and good morning our viewers. Um, what's the overview of the real estate industry? The real estate industry has been growing over the years. Mm. Um, we look at the 1980s where it was dormant uh, basically because of what was happening, political instability. Mm -hmm. Looking at 2000s, the industry has started to pick up. Yeah. We've seen uh, many developers come on board. We have seen um, many financing institutions come on board. You know, financing is the heart of real estate. If people mm -hmm. don't have money, then how would we finance, yeah, finance sure. the real estate projects? We have seen even the population getting more money mm. so they can afford to buy. You know, they can afford to buy land, they can mm. afford to build. But even those that are renting need houses. So we've seen a great progress. Mm. Are we there yet? No, but we are steadily getting there. Okay. Yes. So when it comes to the global overview, real estate is pretty much very good business across the globe in the United States, Europe, mm. but also across Africa. Sure. You see Nigeria, South Africa, and our neighboring Kenya. Yeah. The industry is really, really huge. Of course, you talking about some of the challenges that we've grappled with that may not see us be at the same level mm. is understandable, but we should be able to understand exactly why countries like Kenya seem to be getting it right when it comes to commercial property sales and stuff like that. There was a time I was talking to a CEO from Citibank mm -hmm. and they said the problem with Uganda is that mm. you don't have offices for international organizations. And I was like, wow. Yes, yes. That it was, is true. Yeah, like my cobbler says, Yakuba <laughs> nyo. <laughs> but is it true? Um, yes. Uh, I will start with uh, Offices. Why? 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 Why we are not uh, yet there is uh, we are still lacking mm. in in some of the things. We are growing, but we are still lacking in some of the things. Uh, for example, I'll tell you uh, uh, one one thing as Uganda real estate industry we've not embraced well mm. is the aspect of sustainability. 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 What does um, that mean? What does that mean? Uh, coming up with buildings that are environmentally friendly. friendly. Real estate contributes about 38% of the global carbon emissions. In fact, we are the biggest players. Wow. So if we came up as real estate and addressed that, 
then we would see um, less of the carbon emissions. Now, going, going back to your question, we don't have international offices because we don't have grade P's or the premiums. A premium grade has to be uh, sustainability, uh, sustainable or mm. eco uh, environmentally friendly. Mm. Uh, so that's why you don't see many multinational companies here. That's why you don't see, because they, we do not meet the standards. Mm. As a matter of fact, World Bank has had to come up with their building which is environmentally friendly because I mean you can't be preaching environmental uh, conservation when you're still yeah. in a grade A which is not environmentally friendly so that yeah. is one of the reasons mm. among many other reasons regulation uh, professionalism mm. we are getting better in professionalism but we are not yet there I mean uh, the real typical broker is, is, is the stage guy, <laughs> the Boda Boda guy, yeah. who doesn't even know how to write his name, mm. who, yeah, so professionalism is also always mm, um, affecting all, us. And there's all, always some kind of uh, stress factor to them when yes. you move around with them from house to house. But of course, there are people who are making the game a little bit better That's true. Uh, by being more organized. Yes. All right. Yes. Let's now go into the nitty gritty of this particular discussion. We are here to understand mm. the new raft of taxes mm. that uh, are being rolled out mm. by government. Sure. The government is acting like a father who needs to ensure things get right yes. and is picking from all aspects to ensure that the money is available mm. uh, to provide key services. And uh, government looks at the real estate sector as a very, very good opportunity for money. No doubt, you've already told us, mm -hmm. it's pretty good business. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the new raft of taxes that have been rolled out? Um, I think um, government needs money, mm -hmm. but I think uh, the real estate industry should not be added more taxes. As a matter of fact, mm. the real estate industry is, is being overtaxed. I don't know about the other industries, mm. but let me just uh, start by giving you some of the taxes that we pay in the industry. Yeah, sure. Um, every time you buy land and mm. you're going to transfer it, you pay stamp duty, which is 1.5%. Uh, for the people- 1.5% of the transaction. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, when you're, you have rentals, you know Ugandans, we've been uh, building a lot of rentals and keeping no, our money there. It is safe. Yeah. You know, real estate is safe. It mm. appreciates in value. So why not put the money there? However, now there's proper rental income tax. Mm. Rental income tax. You are taxed for every property uh, that you have. Well, it's, it's different for the individuals. Um, you, you get to uh, pay 6% after getting off a threshold of 2.820. Mm. But that's a lot of tax again. Uh, and then for the companies, they pay the 30% of the expenses and all that. That is now property uh, rental income tax. We have mm. property rates, which are charged by municipalities. Or I won't say district, but municipalities or town where you are, Chira, uh, Wakiso. Mm. We have to pay all those taxes. Uh, we have, um, we pay VAT, uh, we pay VAT on all the construction materials. Uh. Mm -hmm. We pay uh, for the professional services like uh, uh, valuers, valuers reports, uh, BOQs, uh, surveyors, architects, they are all taxed. Now with all those taxes, then you add on a 5% uh, withholding tax, I think it is very, uh, that's quite a lot. Mm -hmm it will ultimately discourage investment in real estate. Now, when it discourages investment in real estate, the supply of the houses will ultimately go down. Mm. As a matter of fact, we already have a housing deficit of 2.4, according to you, boss. I also have uh, issues with that figure. 2.4, that was last shared in 2012. 12. So the, the problem actually could be bigger. <laughs> It is projected, I think, wow. by 2030, the housing deficit could be a lot. And mm. it's in the urban centers, in the urban centers where the proposed 5% mm. is supposed to work. to work. So if the cost of production goes higher, people will withdraw their money and put it elsewhere and keep it. Now, real estate contributes about 7.5% to the annual GDP mm. of this country. Mm. So you don't want to do that. That's right. It creates employment. It, 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 it has a lot of leakages to all the other industries. So if you continue taxing it more, I think you'll be killing it. 
mm. and ultimately the economic growth and development. Interesting. Yeah. There's something you spoke about, the fact mm -hmm. that there's a housing deficit, and uh, that is quite confusing because when you go around Kampala, yes. the metropolitan areas and some other parts within, especially central Uganda, yes. you realize that there are many condos mm -hmm. that are empty. Interesting. So what's the explanation there? Thank you very much for that wonderful question. Now, you see, there's a lot of property that is coming up. Mm. But I would say it is not to the rightful people. How oh. much does that condo cost? A one bed condo in Uganda, a good one, mm -hmm. well built, goes for 200 million shillings and above. I know those of 300, I know those of 500, I've seen them on the market, you get it. So how many average Ugandans, or like Rachel actually, can afford 200 million for a one bed condo? You get it? So we have targeted the middle income. Not even the middle income. I, I feel like it's the high end. And mm. we have left the lower end. Is that okay. okay? So if we came up with affordable housing, I want to just give you a scenario. Imagine if it was about 100 million. Mm. I think many people would be able to, to, to afford it, probably. 100 million. Yeah, the middle income would be able to afford it, mm. but it's 200 and above. So the properties that are coming up, are for mm. the high end, not the lower end. So the housing deficit is going to continue going up. Okay. Yeah. So before we even go into any other thing, let me first ensure that that particular point is uh, not well addressed, but okay. we see exactly how it can be addressed because okay. right now mm. we are not the implementers, exactly. especially when it comes to regulation and law. Yes. You are a stakeholder, um, a media guy. If, for example, mm. the National Social Security Fund mm. had the project mm -hmm. in uh, Ruboa yes. that people completely misunderstood. Mm -hmm. People thought that NSSF was building these condominiums for them exactly. as savers. As savers, yeah. Yet the financial behemoth was simply putting these to the specific market the that can end. afford yes. the high end. Yes. So that whatever money mm. is recouped from that investment mm. comes back to the savers as interest. As interest, yes. Okay? yes. Now, that is understandable. But when you see many mushrooming, is there a particular model that can address the low income earners? For example, is it something like a uh, a one-room estate that runs from one point of metropolitan Kampala to another, mm -hmm. and then people can be able to afford these houses mm. on a monthly basis. Because when you talk about buying it at 100 million Uganda shillings, mm. and you say it's affordable to some, still, me, when you talk about 100 million Uganda shillings, my mm. guts go... Mm, yes, you know? I, I hear you, I yeah. hear you. Uh, so, I, there's no particular model. Mm. But um, one thing I know is countries that have been able to work or solve partially the housing mm. deficit, mm. government has had a big hand. Okay. You know the private developers that come to, 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 to build, they're mm. also looking for profit. Yeah, know? sure, they're businessmen. So, exactly, so that's mm. why they'll go for the high end and the middle income. But yet you can build, like what you've said, one room across in a, in a, in a cheaper place, mm -hmm. is that okay? And, and make it cheaper, where rent is 100, maybe 1,000 or 50,000, mm. as, as, as long as government comes in. Yeah. Let me give you a scenario. A few days back, mm. uh, the government of South Africa, city of Cape Town, came up with a fund to give micro developers mm. money. I said micro, yeah. and this is the units they're looking at. People who are building between 14 units mm. to 30 units. Mm. That typical music goes that we have here. Mm. They're giving them money so that they can be able to add onto their, uh, what they already have That's right. and put up mm. affordable housing for the lower income the people. Low income. In fact, that money is for people building in the lower end, mm -hmm. not Kololo, not, not Kololo Monyonyo. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Apart from that, apart from putting up that development fund, they've also increased on the money for infrastructure so that the people at the lower end can be able to travel to their places. Mm -hmm. So such models work. I've seen again some countries, in fact, South Africa, they've come up and built also houses for the lower end, that's, that's quite pricey. Mm. And also have challenges with it because people will end up selling them to again to the rich people and all that. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. But we need to work with the private sector. Mm. Give them incentives, give them subsidies 
to lower the cost of production. So that's why I'm saying instead of taxing us, mm. giving us more taxes, at least come up with the subsidies mm. that will encourage development, which will ultimately flow into the economy and we see development, okay. economic growth. All right. Yeah. We, shall going, we shall be going for a break pretty shortly, but uh, first take us through any aspect of regulation that uh, may be on the shelves that seeks to address some of these particular concerns. Is there anything you're aware of? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Uh, so we've had a problem with regulation. Mm. You can't go, we always laugh about with, with colleagues and say you can't go to the field <laughs> to play. Even yeah. Messi needs a referee. That's right. You get it. Mm. So you, there's no referee mm. there. Well, that is being solved currently. We have uh, the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development mm. working on something to, for regulation. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, there could be a bill already in Parliament mm. waiting. Okay. But apart from that, we have um, the Surveyors Registration Act, or I think of 1973, mm. uh, where we saw uh, real estate agents and brokers uh, measured as surveyors. Mm. So the SRB Uganda Surveys Registration Board is also coming up uh, or reactivating that act mm. to see that agents, brokers, property managers, facility managers can be regulated using that act of 1973 just in case the Ministry of Lands, Urban, uh, Housing and Urban Development doesn't come on board. So if we see one of those come through, we'll get a better environment. Okay. Yes. All right. That's uh, very, very interesting, no doubt. It all speaks to the fact that uh, the landscape seems to be very positive going yes. forward, yes. especially given the fact that uh, many Ugandans can now afford uh, better living. Now, yes. better living must not be confused with people's ability to actually demand in mm. aggregate nature mm. uh, these uh, kind of uh, services. Mm. I'll be joined very shortly by uh, Nicholas Asimwe, the Executive Director, Real Estate Institute of uh, East Africa. These are key players in the industry and will have a, a very, a very critical uh, submission to make. Uh, a very critical submission to make in light of uh, what we are discussing right now. But allow me simply welcome Mr. Nicholas Asimwe to the show. A very good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, First great. of all, my name is Anaitwe Nicholas. Anaitwe Nicholas. Anaitwe Nicholas. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you, welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, my apologies for... <laughs> no, it's quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Anaitwe yeah. Nicholas. Yes. Well, you found us in the middle of what's no doubt a very interesting discussion. Yeah. Right. The taxation landscape in the country. Uh, Madam Dr. Rachel Mirembe has uh, very ably given us an overview thank of you. what we are dealing with but yes. most importantly, Thank the you. realities on ground. Let me first ask you a general question about the taxation landscape of the real estate industry. Is there anything that is a pain point to you and uh, other stakeholders? Yeah, first of all, real estate uh, is an industry that uh, really ha has multiple kind of multiplier effect that when you're handling it, you need to handle it with a lot of care. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also advocate for taxation, obviously, mm -hmm. because that's where the government also develops. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's how the state develops. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that the way it is being introduced, uh -huh. the, uh, um, yeah, for example, people are talking about uh, um, this transactional, transactional uh, a tax mm. on property. But for us, we understand it differently. Mm. They are not coming down, first of all, to explain it to people. That tax is not bad and it's not new. So mm. It's not that it's not practiced anywhere. That's right. But the way they bring it, they simply bring, they have not sensitized the people, they have not, uh, uh, come, for them also, I think they don't know them. They think they bring. And I won't tell you, <laughs> which is how many of them have studied real estate. Okay. <laughs> You get it? Yeah. Because for us, we understand it as a um, capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. Where they come to tax profit that one has made on top of what? The property. Mm -hmm. You've sold it, you've bought it 100 million, you are selling it 200 million. Mm -hmm. 
So they come tax the difference yeah, there, which yeah, is 100 million. Yeah, 100 million. And also, not the whole of it. They must reduce operation costs, mm. expenses, and whatever. Mm. But now, when you start saying that it's transactional, uh, 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 out of transactions, we shall think that they have come now to compete with, uh, with the agents. Mm. Agents asking for 5%, 10%. You come to ask for 5%, now you are making it uh, 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 now 15%. It, mm -hmm. it is not practical, mm -hmm. it can't work. First of all, they are, they are making it expensive, it's too high, too, too high. Mm -hmm. And the people don't know that they are going to tax profit. When you talk about sales, so, someone will think that, hey, I've got 100 million, now they are going to tax 100, uh, on 100 million. Mm -hmm. They are going, first of all, to fizzle a, 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 a real estate development. Mm. People are going to run away out of the market because it will not be profitable. Mm. And we shall be losing out many things because of the multiplier effect I've told you mm. that come with real estate. First of all, employment. Mm. We have people who are selling uh, uh, materials, materials, building materials. Yeah. Mm. We have people uh, uh, um, who are teaching real estate, I'm teaching real estate, she's teaching real estate. Mm. We have uh, uh, real estate brokers. Mm. By the way, I want to tell you that even Eros is, <laughs> we will we lose uh, uh, some work. Yeah, so sure. it's something big that they need to come out to introduce and also explain to people, mm. you get, eh? these taxes are not bad. One, the problem is they are too high. High. Secondly, the way they collect mm. it is too harsh. Thirdly, uh, 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 that they have not educated people. First of all, you need to know how many taxes are applied to property. Okay. Uh, there is ground rent, there is uh, property rates, there is stamp duty, uh, there is uh, um, withholding. withholding tax, mm. there is VAT, there is uh, all those things, income tax. They are about eight. Mm. So when you subject them to, uh, 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 to practitioners, you will find it is very, very expensive. And, uh, and it wouldn't be a problem. As I said when I was coming, yeah. government ought to do its part. You first invest, then you bring something out of it. Mm. You gain profits. It should, first of all, incentivize, as she was saying, give incentives to to, to the developers and uh, all practitioners in real estate, it should give subsidies, it should give education, it should provide land, it should provide infrastructure. Should, because we find infrastructure contributing uh, uh, like 30 to 40 percent of the expenditure someone has to spend. You are putting out your own electricity, you are putting out your own water, you are putting out your roads. And the problem is, for example, I invest in electricity, I bring a transformer, put there, I have many poles. And they call it for umemi. It takes it when it is my money. And some people will come to connect from those poles. Yeah. They don't refund me. Mm. It's the same as water. We feel that we are being cheated. And the government is trying to trip what has not invested. We wouldn't care if we are making profits not to pay taxes. But the problem is even the small that, that we have, it's being taken. Interesting submission there, and I'll stay with you very shortly before I return, I return to Dr. Rachel uh, yes. Mirembe. Yeah. When you speak about the fact that the implementers might also be operating from a gray area yes. in terms of uh, what they ought to tax yes. and uh, in how, in what way they ought to tax, yes. let me talk about the players themselves yes. in real estate. If anybody got money and decided to Form a company yes. going into real estate. No one is going to ask whether they understand real estate or not. Yes, people will be like, "Well, there's a new company. There we are. Correct. Correct. Again, properties. Correct. And is doing its job. Correct. Now, such an individual mm. will grapple with understanding the taxation landscape yes. and will look at anything that is introduced as yes. something that is directed towards yes. their profit right. and unfair. Mm. Yes. Now we have a situation where mm -hmm. we have such players in the market. Yes. You are teachers of yes. real estate, right. lecturers, so to speak, yes. but my audience pretty much understands teachers more than lecturers. I'm a trainer. And you're a trainer. <laughs> yes. You oh, understand you this okay. The vast majority of players in the industry yes. are businessmen. Right. Okay? Yes. They are not realtors. Yes. Mm. And that is the question yes. Yes. I want to ask. Yes. How are you addressing this? I want to tell you, I respect investors. Mm. I respect okay. developers mm. because they run on job practice. Okay. Uh -huh. Don't joke with those people. They, I don't know how they no get, doubt. it's no out doubt. of practice. Yeah. 
Yes, the terms of practice. Someone can trace, he knows how much return rate on investment, he knows mm -hmm. if I put that this, I will get out of this, whatever. In fact, we uh, some of times, because they, it's like uh, they are doing research for us, mm -hmm. we, we, we get information from them. So, and they also know that if you come in the industry and you are not shrewd, you will be first of doubt. Mm -hmm. And no wonder most of them have started and we, we, we no longer see them. So it's not about, uh, 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 first of all, you need to know it, real estate as a profession. Mm. You don't simply run and you think you're cross. You, 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 you won't. It, is, it has principles to follow. Mm. It has the guidelines. It has all those things. And uh, I want to tell you that those people that you are talking about, investors, they, 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 they are knowledgeable mm. because they consult. That's right. They are knowledgeable because they consult. They will not simply start any development without consulting us. So uh, 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 I want to tell you that the advantage they have is that, one, they would be having money. Mm. Secondly, they will always consult because they have money to put in, in what? In, in consulting. Mm. No one will simply say that I'm going to demolish this, uh, uh, this Serena and okay. come up with, a, uh, with another property yeah. without first studying and uh, getting to know whether he will make profits. That's right. Yeah. When you speak about consulting, the yeah. questions are pretty pivot. To yeah. Dr. Sure. Uh, Rachel uh, Mirembe, who yeah. is, of course, uh, uh, a honcho at the Global Institute of Property Studies and a lecturer at Macquarie University Business School. My concern is, mm. and I respect the fact that uh, so many people uh, want to put money into any business, yes. and of course, they act uh, from a business mindset. Yeah. Regulation before the government comes in is mm. very important for mm. sector players mm. and we see every sector ensuring that either people are registered mm. in order to avoid for engineers it's quacks architects quacks doctors quacks for the real estate mm. i don't know the yeah, shrewd quacks. business persons <laughs> could be shrewd to one person okay. but fraudsters to another yeah. and we have incidents incidents for example in courts of law where one person has sold land to more than one pass one customer the mm. same piece of land yes and when complaints come up many of them we've seen them ending up in court mm. and jailed for that matter mm. what is the push like right now when it comes to internal mechanisms to ensure that whoever is an actor within the industry is doing so in a way that can be monitored wow thank you for that question and um, <clears throat> i want to say that when we look at the agents, the property managers, the facility managers, mm. we do not have any 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 like mechanism mm. for now mm. because we don't have a law. Everyone does whatever they want because it's a free entry <sighs> and exit. Wow. Yes, and with that we have seen a lot of fraud, like you said. Mm. Uh, last year I did a research across the whole of Uganda and I was looking at how do these uh, people behave. And one of the things we got was, uh, we call them multiple sales, which have been done by the clients themselves, who are the people selling the properties, but also the LCs and the agents. Mm. You sell one property or piece of land to three different people. Mm. And this has been aided by the LCs or the clients themselves or the real estate agents. We know he already sold, but you even help him to get another person yeah. and another person another person simply because you have nowhere you go back and say this person cheated me mm. so they probably withdraw the license or something that's where the regulation comes in handy mm. once the regulation is there we'll have a professional body or whoever will be regulating will have a regulator when you do anything wrong just like a doctor mm. real estate is a profession that's right yeah. you get yeah. it yeah. Sure. so we just withhold your license mm. and you will not be but by now you have nothing to do. Mm, you go sure, to police sure. and police will tell you, we know that person. <laughs> he has been here for the same case four times and you're wondering what this police up to. Yeah. So there's no, yeah. All right, so, so that's interesting. And of course the land question being uh, one that uh, causes a lot of tension across mm. the country mm. that calls for greater uh, regulation. But of That's course, true. you just brought in the aspect of the police. I think it's mm. a, a damning assessment on the part of the police mm. uh, to be able to know uh, some of the people who are involved in land fraud, but you consistently uh, look at them and like uh, the good doctor uh, says, mm. well, we know that person, stuff like that. He's been it's here also, three times. It's a damning mm. assessment on the part mm. of the police, mm. I'm hoping. 
something can be done to that. Mm -hmm. Let me return to uh, Mr. Arinaitre. If this tax that is being proposed is not paid within 15 days following the sale or transfer mm -hmm. of a non-business asset, the taxpayer will be penalized with interest. It's designed so that within 15 days of disposal date, the person selling the non-business asset must notify the Commissioner General in writing of the sales specifics. Now, you will talk about the fact that this is not fair, but if it is in place, you're going to have to comply. Mm. 15 days. <laughs> no, I want to tell you that uh, um, we also belong to government. Mm. Ah, sure. But we are saying we need to follow the principles, the right principles. Mm. They have to consult how it is going to be implemented. Have you offered any But have we been consulted? Line? Exactly. Have we been consulted? In fact, it's very unfortunate that we are the people calling them to consult us. Mm. But what you have asked, mm. what will be done, I want to tell you, that we will fail. <laughs> Why? Okay. It's not the first law that is coming. Mm. We have seen many laws coming and they don't uh, take root. They're not implemented. There are many laws. So it is not, we, we are saying, unless they revise, unless they come and we sit, uh, there is no way, more special implementation, how to, to, to exercise it. Mm. They have told you, for example, they have not told the people that they will be taxing profit. Mm. People don't know. And also, it must not apply to, uh, 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 for example, to residential. It shouldn't. Secondly, uh, it should also only go to people who are doing real estate as business, not someone who is building, to, to, for example, who is buying to build. Mm -hmm. You get me? That uh, uh, marginal help me, cost. Help me understand that. Yes. Somebody who is doing real estate as business. As business. And then another yes. who is buying land yes. to build. Yes. That is uh, building a home. Yes. So to speak. Mm. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You will be now uh, 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 killing the demand eh, mm. of the people who are supposed what? to be having uh, oh. a building. Okay. And secondly, it would be a responsibility, by the way, of government to build houses. To, to encourage people to build houses. Mm. They should motivate them. So there you will be demotivating. So the, f the problem is that uh, uh, when you bring this, uh, you, you are putting it to someone who's going to build his own house, really. Now you are discouraging housing. You see, why I'm saying that it's about, it's about people who are doing real mm. estate is if I'm doing real estate as a business, I'm, I have bought a property for a reason of selling it, reselling. Mm. That's where you need to come in to tax me. But I'm, build, I'm buying a property for accommodation. You shouldn't. This tax, I'm telling you, it is not new. We know it. We know these things. We teach them. Mm. Huh? You get them. She has been giving you some references in South Africa. And where? What? We, 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 we consult. So it needs to be well explained. And they need to come to us. We do what? We, 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 we share ideas on how it can be implemented. Otherwise, without that, it is not the first law really not to be implemented. Mm. In Uganda, <laughs> we are not in discuss of what? Discuss of, of laws. Of laws. But implementation. Implementation. Yeah. Um, All right. Maybe yes. can I just Please. add on, on what up. Mr. Nicholas says? Um, I, the, the point that the people who are buying to to, to use the, the land for residentials, mm. I think they should be catered for what I've seen in other countries. For example, for first-time buyers, yes. you are not taxed. For sure. First-time first buyers. Yes. buyers. Yes. But if it's your second, your mm. third, your fourth, ah. probably. Because mm. most of them you're buying the second, third, and fourth to resell or for business, simply mm. like Nicola mm. said. Mm. Yes, yes. So I wish we could opt that, uh, put in mm. that aspect of first-time buyer. I've seen it in, in Rwanda. Mm. I've seen it in South Africa again. I think that would also help. So we need <laughs> some more help. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If government or Uganda Revenue Authority for that matter, mm. today it's uh, in the eye of the storm, traders mm. uh, threatening to close shop mm. and yes. uh, some of the issues they talk about here, mm. uh, the taxes on commercial properties and uh, that also comes in. Uh, they've also spoken about rent, the fact that it's high, but that's a little bit away uh, from the gist of uh, taxation. Who does government approach? when it wants to talk to realtors and other actors within the real, in real estate I, I would suggest that uh, you invite the government to tell you the people they approach. <laughs> <laughs> for them, they go for peace. For sure, I can't ask that. They just go to collect. Eh? They just go to collect. And I want to tell you, yep. it's about these things they usually cry about, you have talked about rent being high, whatever. Mm. It's not that. Okay. She will tell you 
that usually it is like water. Rent will run like water. It will not climb the, what, the hill mm. unless it is pumped. So even who, people who are crying that rent is high, uh, they are just uh, disguising. When rent becomes high, you run to where it is cheaper. And uh, this person, the landlord who is hiking rent, will obviously lose tenants and the property will be empty and uh, no one will want to see a property that is empty. They will have to reduce rent. So let's, don't keep where you are just because you are crying and you are calling government, all those things. No, you go where you know that you will get the benefit mm -hmm. because of uh, the place you are renting. Thank you very much. Yeah. That one's a very poignant <laughs> statement. <laughs> yes. Doctor, yes. your last words on this, and then Mr. Aridaito will wrap it up for us. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, probably um, we would, as real estate industry, mm. we are happy to pay the taxes. We want to comply. But um, like Mr. Nicholas said, uh, let us see more sensitization. Mm. Let us see more involvement of the stakeholders. And for me, from the economic point of view, I would suggest we, instead of milking a cow that mm. you're not feeding, ah. um, wow. fast feed it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Let us see subsidies to reduce on the cost of production. Mm -hmm. Give some free land for affordable housing. Let us see infrastructure. Mr. Nicholas told you we, uh, the infrastructure alone brings to 30 to 40 percent. Mm. So if we could see government come up with the roads, uh, install the, the electricity, uh, put in the water, the basics, internet, mm. then it means the cost of production has significantly gone down. Because the cost of production is down, it will encourage more people to buy the housing or to buy the land. When more people buy, we'll see the housing deficit go down. Mm. But remember, like we said, real estate has very many leakages, employment, uh, there are community uh, factors and all that. That's right. Ultimately, we will see economic growth and development without necessarily taxing, mm. but they'll actually, in the end, get even much more taxes than introducing uh, more burden. All right. Yeah. Mr. Renatri, 60 mm. seconds. Oh, thank you very much, and uh, I wish next time you could call us for two hours, not the, uh, <laughs> not the 60 seconds we are talking about. Yes, because real estate is big, and now when we talk about real estate economics here, right. you will get surprised. No doubt. Because no when, doubt. It, when we bring in government, mm. now we call it the public policy dimension of real estate. Okay. Government has failed, and by the way, I want to tell you that it has betrayed us mm. when it comes to real estate. Okay. Because we, we are seeing many roads, like for example, talk about condominium property road that was uh, enacted in 2001, mm. up to day. You cannot put in cover, you cannot put in guru, you cannot put, people don't know it. You, you get it? So it's upon government really to come out and uh, teach people mm. and uh, incentivize them before they introduce this. I want to tell you, he could be around or whatever listening to me. The commissioner, I've called him several times. <laughs> he referred me to his people. These people, they are not speaking. I, I, was, I was asking what's happening. You yeah. people, this law, you cannot bring it that way. <laughs> it has, it's good, but it has to be educated to, to, uh, 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 to the practitioners. Mm. All right, Mr. Nicholas Arinatre, I can assure you that uh, the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority is watching Morning at NTV, as is other government officials, because this is their choice for breakfast show. It's been a pleasure having your company. Of course, you are the Executive Director at the Real Estate Institute of East Africa. And many thanks to you too, Dr. Rachel Nirembe, consultant and uh, lecturer at Macquarie University Business School, teaching real estate. I hope this conversation has emboldened your understanding of the industry, but also appreciate the dynamics that stakeholders are working within. It's been a pleasure. Now, stay with us. When we return from the break, we shall be taking note of the polarization of politics in the country. That is a conversation that you should not miss. Stay with us.